The Manhua opens up in a stadium where girls are taking their PE class. A boy was staring at them from the outside. The boy looked at a girl and asked if they were learning physical education. As the girls are running and playing volleyball, the boy says that their youth is good while having a nosebleed. A girl sees this and goes to her instructor, whose name is Tong. She tells teacher Tong that a strange man has been staring at them for some time. The teacher says to the girl that he must be a pervert who enjoys watching girls learn physical education, and she will deal with him. In anger, she goes to confront the boy, but suddenly some of her students call her and ask her to help. They tell her that Yuji, one of the girls from that class, has suddenly collapsed. Teacher, after hearing this, runs towards the girl and tells everyone to stay still. Teacher Tong hurries and checks Yuji's condition and tells everyone that she thinks Yuji is a sunstroke. So she instructs everyone to spread out so that they won't block the air circulation while she gives artificial breathing. The artificial breathing doesn't work, so she asks two girls to help her carry Yuji to the nurse's office. But just then, the boy who was staring at the girls appears next to Teacher Tong, which scares Teacher Tong a bit. The boy tells her to weep. The teacher in anger yells at him and says that he was the pervert who was staring at them. What does he want? She tells him to stay away from her students, but the boy tells Teacher Tong that Yu Ji may have had heart failure and that moving her may put her life in danger. Teacher Tong was dumbfounded about hearing this. She asked the man why should she believe him. Just then, one of Teacher Tong's students tells her that she remembers. One time, Yu Ji told her that she fainted while going to the hospital, and her condition was quite unstable and she nearly died. She further says that Yu Ji brings a bottle of medicine with her and when she takes those medicines, her condition gets better. Teacher Tong finds that bottle and opens it. It was empty, but it had a very strong smell. The boy sniffs and says that these must be the 13 types of medical herbs. Now he was sure that Yuji had heart disease. The boy says to Teacher Tong that these are Chinese medicines for the heart and that the person who prescribes these to Yuji must be an expert. Teacher Tong, in shock, asks the boy who he was. The boy says he has learned Chinese medicine, and his name is Yong Yu. Teacher Tong asks Young Yu if he has any good methods to cure Yu Ji. Young Yu gets up and says that artificial breathing with a massage to the chest at the same time is one of the best choices at this moment. The teacher remembers that she already tried it, but it didn't work. So she confronts Young Yu and says that she already did artificial breathing. She even massaged her chest, but it didn't work. Zheng Yu also saw that. Zheng Yu says to teacher Tong that Yu Ji fainted because of heart failure, which is very different from normal strokes. And it requires someone with a strong lung capacity to do artificial breathing in these cases, and he can save her. But they must hurry because he has to do it in under 10 minutes. Otherwise, Yu Ji's life will be in danger. Teacher Tong says in her mind that it has been 8 minutes since Yu Ji faded. And if what if Zheng Yu says is true, they don't have much time. So Teacher Tong allows Young to perform artificial breathing and says to him that she is sorry to trouble him. Xiang Yu says to her that she is welcome, that he is a doctor and that saving lives and helping people is his job. Then he tells everyone to turn around so he can start Yuji's treatment. He tells everyone that if they won't turn around, he won't be able to treat Yuji comfortably and accurately. Teacher Tong gets suspicious after hearing these words but soon thinks that Young Zhu came to this school, so it means that he is their school's doctor. And to make things worse, if anything happens to Mo Yuzi, the school will have to face a lot of trouble. Teacher Tong instructs the whole class to turn around and tells them that they are not allowed to turn around until Dr. Zheng tells them to. When the whole class turns around to the other side, Teacher Tong said to Zheng Yu that everyone has turned around and he can start the treatment. Zheng Yu says to Teacher Tong that before he starts, he wants to make it clear that he doesn't distinguish between male and female patients. And from this point onward, whatever he does, she should keep in mind that he is doing it to save Zhu Zi. Teacher Tong was a bit surprised by his words, so Zheng Yu says to her that there is no need to be surprised. But if the situation continues, Yu Ji's life and reputation will be in danger. Teacher Tong in frustration yells at Zheng Yu and says what's wrong with him? It's already been 9 minutes since Yu Ji fainted, and he is still not doing anything. Does he want to save Yu Ji? Zheng Yu lifts Yu Ji's shirt, revealing her bra. Teacher Tong asks Zheng Yu what he is doing. Zheng Yu says to her that he is uniting her bra. Teacher Tong is a PE teacher. She must have some knowledge about basic first aid treatment, doesn't she? Teacher Tong in her mind recalls that before performing first aid on a person, his or her chest should be released from any sort of stress or pressure. It was the most basic knowledge. Soon she realizes that Zhang Yi was glaring at the bra and asks what's wrong. Zhang Yi while having a nosebleed says it's pink. 
teacher Tong in anger yells at him and tells him to be serious and to quickly save Yu Zi as they only have 30 seconds left to save Yu Zi. Zhang Yu says that he only needs 30 seconds to save Yu Zi and he will use his special method for that. Zhang Yu tells teacher Tong to step aside while stuffing Yu Zi's bra in his back pocket. Zhang Yu once stands on his hands and uses some type of qi to massage Yu Ki. Because of this, she responds and Zhang Yu performs artificial breathing on her. After his treatment, he tells Teacher Tong that Yuji will wake up and that if there's any other problem, she can find him at Vice Chancellor Q's office. Teacher Tong was quite impressed and she thinks that in Principal Q's office, the school hospital was under Miss Q's control. So, does it mean that Zhang Yu is a new doctor? As it is not easy to be employed by Miss Q, it means that Zhang Yu is quite talented, and by looking at him, he looks like he is the same age as she is. But suddenly Zhang Yu stopped and he asked Teacher Tong if she could tell him the way to Principal Q's office. Teacher Tong, who was immersed in her deep thoughts, suddenly all has her hopes shattered. And she says while making a strange face to Zhang Yu to follow that building. After that, he should head east and after one kilometer, he will be able to see the Principal Q's office. She further asks him that he doesn't even know where the Principal Q's office is. Does he know Miss Q? At that moment, one of our students calls to her and tells her that Yuji has just woken up. Teacher Tong at once rushes to Yuji's side and asks her how she is feeling. She tells the rest of the class that they can do whatever they want to do. She will be taking care of Yuji. Yuji says to Miss Tong that she was fine now and she fainted because of her chronic disease. She says that she didn't think that her condition would get worse at such a high speed. Miss Tong is already worried for Shou Yi, so she says to Yuji that she shouldn't stay alone because it can put her life in danger. And she shouldn't do these intense physical exercises in the future, as even this time it was dangerous, as she could have lost her life. Yuji says to Miss Tong that she had a dream about a strange man, but at that moment she realizes that her bra was missing, so she asks Miss Tong about it. She says that her bra has disappeared, and Miss Tong suddenly remembers that it must be Zhang Yu. He must have put Yuji's bra in his pocket while she was not paying attention. Miss Tong helps Yuji to get help and says to her that she would help her get to the hospital first. She tells Yuji that when Yuji fainted, she untied her bra so that her chest would be released from the pressure. And then she gave it to another girl, but she forgot who the student was, so she will ask around for her later. Yuji thanks Miss Tong for her care. Meanwhile, Zhang Yu makes his way to Principal Q's building, but as he goes inside the office, he finds Miss Q in a meeting with a man. The man says to Zhang Zhu that he is Yang Yun's boyfriend and that his name is Long Tan Yang. Long Tan Yu says to Zhang Yu what qualifications he has to be Yang Yun's husband. After some verbal exchange, Xiong Yu asks Long Tan Yang what during thousands of years of Chinese history, what is the thing that has been worshipped the most? Long Tan Yang says that it's for Yale Pelti. Zhang Yu says that Long Tan Yang knows that and he still wants to come between them. Zhang Yu says that it was their grandpa who decided on this marriage and although numerous beauties want to marry him, but he still refused them all and he never met Hong Yin before. And even if she was ugly, he would have still married her. Hong Yin says to Zhang Yu that if what he says is true, many girls want to marry him. Yang Ju says that's true, but they are just his friends, nothing more. Hong Yin says that she will go back to her home and tell her grandpa to cancel the marriage and she will even compensate him for this. She asks him how much he wants his compensation. Zhang Yu says that they can discuss this after this kid. He points at Long Tan Yang and goes out. Hong Yin tells Long Tan Yang to go and then Zhang Yu says to her that if she wants to find a fake boyfriend, she should search for someone else. Long Tan Yang was not so good. She asks him what she could do to cancel the marriage, but Zhang Yu says that she doesn't need to do that as he has already promised his grandpa that he will marry her and have a lot of kids with her. Hong Yin says to Zhang Yu that besides money, once they cancel the marriage, she will even introduce him to some beautiful ladies. Zhang Yu says that he already has met a lot of beautiful ladies in the school. Does she want to give all of them to him? In anger, Hong Yin tries to kick Zhang Yu while saying that it will take him 40 years just to meet one each day. But Zhang Yu dodges her kick and trips her, and Hong Yin falls on her desk. Zhang Yu grabs her hand on her back and Hong Yin says to Zhang Yu to let her go, otherwise it will not end well for him. Zhang Yu says that if he does that, she will try to hit him again. So he comes up with an idea and ties her hand with Zhang Yu's bra. Young Hin says that she will tell her grandfather about this and her grandfather will surely take her side. But Zhang Yu didn't pay any attention to her and said that he has checked the calendar. And that next Friday is a good day for their marriage. Although it's quite sudden, they will be able to hold the marriage if they speed things up. While they were talking, Miss Tong knocked on the door and asked if Dr. Zhang was in the office. Hong Yin thinks, why is Miss Tong asking for Zhang Yu? And why did she call him doctor? But suddenly, Zhang Yu tells Miss Tong to come in. Hong Yin yells at him and says, who will out to him to let Miss Tong in? 
Hang Yin asks Miss Tong the purpose of her visit, to which Miss Tong says that she was there for the bra. Hang Yin starts to think that Zheng Yu and Miss Tong have some kind of relationship, because she thinks the bra belongs to Miss Tong. Hong Zhu apologizes to Miss Tong and says that he completely forgot to return the bra, but Miss Tong says that it was her fault that she didn't remind him. Sheng Yu says he will return the bra later because he used it for something. Hong Yin says to Miss Tong that if she doesn't have anything else to say, she can leave. When Miss Tong leaves, Hong Yin says to Zheng Yu that she'll pay him 100 million and will allow him to keep his relationship with Miss Tong, so he should just cancel the marriage. Sheng Yu says although Miss Tong is very beautiful and if she wants, he will allow her to be his side. He will not cancel their marriage as it was something decided by their grandfathers. And even Hong Yin's dad knows about it. Hong Yin again asks him what she should do to cancel it. But Zheng Yu says that he will not cancel the marriage. Hong Yin warns Zheng Yu that if he doesn't listen to her and forces her to marry him, she will never be happy and will always be angry with him. She will never do anything for him and he will never have happiness. So he should think twice about it. Zheng Yu says to Hong Yin that his family is rich and after their marriage, they can hire maids and nannies. They will do all the work and she would have to do nothing. And he can bear her anger and she doesn't have to meet him during the day. She will only accompany him during the night. Meanwhile, Hong Yin manages to free herself, and she throws that bar towards Hyung Yu and calls him a B-word. She tells him to get out and never show his face again. He catches the bra and says to her that's not possible, because her grandfather was the one who told Hyung Yu to meet her, and he also told Hyung Yu to become employed at Hong Yin's school in any position. Hong Yin says to Hyung Yu what his level of Kitchen, high school level, graduation level, or master level. Hong Yu says that all his life he has been traveling around the world with his grandfather, and that it was the first time in his life that he ever stepped into a university. Hong Yin then asks him what his strengths were. Hyung Yu says that other than the fact that his hair is unable to grow, he is practically good at all other things, like martial arts and Chinese traditional medicines. Hong Yin says to Hyung Yu that their school is a security team and all of them have police backgrounds, so his martial art talent is not needed. Furthermore, their school has many doctors and among them, one doctor has clinical experience of 10 years, and that doctor has gotten education over the sea. Plus, that doctor is a well-known person in this field as well, so he is not needed. Xiang Yu says to Hong Yin that in any case, she should arrange a meeting between him and the doctor. Hong Yin agrees. On the way, Hyung Yu says to Hong Yin that her school is quite big and they can take a car just to reach the hospital. When they arrive at the hospital, Hong Yin says to Hyung Yu that Miao Ri is busy taking care of a patient so they'll have to wait. Meantime, they run into a student and she greets Hyung Yu. Here, Hyung Yu sees Yu He who's lying in the bed. Hong Yu asks the student if she's fine and why she's in the state. The student tells him that after his treatment she was fine, but one girl who hates her told her that the doctor was giving her artificial breathing and touched her, and after that her condition got worse. Hong Yun asks Miao Ri about Hu Zi's condition. Miao Ri tells her that there are no abnormal symptoms, but she's still unconscious, which is strange. At that moment, Hyung Yu steps up and asks him to give him a chance. Miao Ri says Hyung Yu about his qualifications, and he tells her that he has learned Chinese medicine while traveling around with their world with his grandfather. She allows him to treat Yu Ji. Hyung Yu quickly gets ready to treat Yu Ji and tells Hyung Yin that instead of standing and looking at him, she should help in taking off Hyung Yu's clothing so he can perform acupuncture needles on her body. After taking off Ho Ji's top, Hong Yin says to Hong Yu that he can start his treatment, but at the same time, she warns him from doing anything bad to Hu Ji. Hong Yu uses Hyung's family's unique technique known as the Five Needles Reviving Acupuncture Technique, and he inserts five needles around Hu Ji's heart. Because of this, Hu Ji's hands start to move along with some voices. Hong Yin and Miao Ri were shocked after seeing this, and Miao Ri can't help but express her admiration by saying, Brilliant! On the other hand, Hong Yu thinks that Hu Ji's heart disease is not something simple, and he thanks God because his five needles technique worked otherwise. Hu Ji could have lost her life. Soon Yu Ji's condition becomes stable, and Hyung Yu tells Myung Ri and Hyung Yin that her condition is temporarily under control, and he has also removed his needles. Miao Ri thanks Hyung Ju and starts calling him Dr. Zhang. She says that his technique is brilliant, and she hopes that Hyung Ju teaches him more about Chinese medicine. But Zhang Yu, on the other hand, says that he won't dare to do that. But if she wants to discuss something, he will help her, but she should keep this thing in mind that he doesn't have a professional license. And he hopes that Miao Ri will not look down on him because of that. He says all this while walking out of the hospital. After Zhang Yu leaves, Miao Ri says to Hong Yin that she told her that Zhang Yu's family and her family were very close for a long time. Does she know how Zhang Yu acquired such a brilliant technique at such a young age? 
Hong Yin was quite confused, and Miao Ri further says that Sheng Yu's personality is also not bad. Hong Yin says to Miao Ri that Hong Zhu's grandfather is one of the seniors in China, and Zhang Yu must have followed his grandfather to learn this medical technique since he was a child. She further says that although Hong Zhu's technique is not as bad as his personality is not good. She warns Miao Ri that she shouldn't judge a book by its cover, and although Zhang Zhu looks decent, she doesn't know what's going on in his mind. Meanwhile, Zhang says that he accidentally read Zhu Zhi's palm, and her palm line seems kind of strange. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Zhu Zhi suddenly wakes up and she vomits blood. On the other hand, Zhang Zhu realizes that something is not right. At the hospital, Hong Yin and Miao Rai are shocked to see Zhu Zhi's condition and are still trying to figure out what was going on. Whereas Zhang Yu rushes back to the hospital. Hong Yin and Miao Ri were both panicking, and Hong Yin asks Miao Ri, Why did Zhu Zhi cough up so much blood? She says that she doesn't know because she has never encountered such a case. Hong Yin suggests that they should take Zhu Zhi to the ER, and Miao Ri agrees while saying that this was the last way. And she asks Hong Yin to help her. But just then, Zhang Zhu comes there and tells him to stop and to not touch Zhu Zhi. He says that the student's life is at risk, and if they try to move her, she will immediately die. Miao Ri asks Zhang Yu the reason for him coming back, and Zhang Yu says that he doesn't have time to explain right now. He asks Miao Ri to help him in decontaminating the silver needles while he will check Zhu Zhi's pulse, and he will find a suitable treatment for her. When Zhang Yu checks Zhu Zhi's pulse, he realizes that he was too careless. Zhu Zhi's heart condition was very weak because of her sickness, which has been there for years. Because of which Zhu Zhi was not able to bear his five needles technique, and her body responded so strongly to the treatment. And it will take him a while to heal her properly. Miao Ri gives the needles to Zhang Zhu and tells him that they have been decontaminated and asks if they are acceptable. Zhang Yu looks at the needles and says that she's done a great job and the level of heat was not too bad. Then Zhang Zhu tells him to step back and he begins his treatment. After doing acupuncture, Zhang Zhu begins to massage Zhu's chest, which Hong Yi becomes furious, but Miao Ri says that it was part of the treatment, and Zhang Zhu is just doing it to clean Yu Zhi's meridian system. After the treatment, Zhang Yu tells him that the dangerous period is over, and Miao Ri asks Yang Zhu about Yu Zhi's treatment. He says that she is not in any danger, but her heart is very weak and she needs to be taken care of. She can't bear any big harassment. Hong Yin then says to Zhang Zhu that she also has some knowledge about acupuncture and asks him the reason for the massage. He says that it has nothing to do with the treatment, he just did it to relieve Yu Zhi of some tensions, while Zhang Yu and Yang Yin were arguing. Miss Tong comes there and she thanks Miao Ri for treating Hu Zhi. Miao Ri tells her that it was Zhang Yu who treated her. Zhang Yu, on the other hand, says that he is in a meeting with two of his friends, so he's left. Soon Yu Zhi starts to wake up and Miao Ri says to others to help her dress Yu Zhi and Hong Yin. Miss Tong and Miao Ri dress her up. Yu Zhi slowly opens her eyes and says that she fainted again, didn't she? She also asks where she is right now. Yu Zhi asks them all if she remembers if she was in the yard and she fainted. Who saved her now? Miss Tong says to Zhu Zhi that she must not panic, the situation was very serious. But fortunately, Miss Q's friend Mr. Zheng was there. He was the one who saved her by using artificial breathing and heart massage. Yu Zhi then asks Yong Yin where her friend was, then she wants to meet him. Yong Xin says that she's left, so Tu Zhi says to her that she should give Yong Yu's number, and she wants to meet him again. Hong Yin remembers that she doesn't have Zhang Yu's phone number, so she makes up an excuse and says to Yu Zhi that her phone is in the office, and she will find Zhang Yu's number and she will give it to her later. Yu Zhi agrees to this and then she thanks them. Yu Zhi further says that she was not feeling well and as it was Friday, she would like to leave early. Hong Yin agrees to this and they leave. While going, Hyung Jin thanks Miao Rao for everything, but Miao Rao thinks that she has done nothing today. It was all Zhang Yu's work. She further thinks that she is very confident in her abilities as a doctor, but after seeing Zhu Zhi's case, she knows that no mountain is the highest and her abilities need to be enhanced more. Half an hour later at Yang Yin's office, Yang Yin was thinking about Zhu Yong. She says that Miao Ri deeply admires him because Zhang Yu traveled a lot with his grandfather, and they treated all sorts of people with different diseases. He has a lot of experience. If he had a professional license like his grandfather, he would have become a well-known person, but that doesn't mean that she will accept him as a husband. Just then, Yang Yin gets a call from Miao Ri which shocks her, and she tells her to meet her at the cafe. At the cafe, Miao Ri says that she has to go because she wants to enhance her abilities and will join her work after she completes the course. Yang Yin asks her if it was because of Zhu Mi's case. Miao Ri agrees and tells Hong Yin not to stop her. Hong Yin says that she was not going to stop her, but she should at least give her time to find another internal doctor which was suitable for this position, or Miao Ri should just suggest someone. Miao Ri says Hong Yin already knows him, on which Hong Yin asks her if she was talking about Zhang Yu. Miao Ri agrees and further says that if Hong Yin is not comfortable, she should just give her Zhang Yu's number and she will ask him instead of her. But she soon finds out that Hong Yin doesn't have Zhang Yu's number and she also doesn't know where he lives. She only met him today, but she says that Zhang Yu will come back because his work is not done.
Miyabri then says to her that she should try her best to persuade him to join, because she will leave regardless of Zhang Yu joining the hospital or not. On the other hand, Zhang Yi was just about to enter his apartment when the landlady came and stopped him. She says to him that he hasn't paid rent since last month and she needs him to pay, otherwise he should get out of the house. Zhang Yu says to her that he will pay the rent by the deadline, which is tomorrow. He's found a super rich fiancé, and instead of paying the rent for these months, he will pay the rent for a whole year. The landlady in anger says to him that he doesn't have any looks, so how can he get a super rich fiancé? Does she live on Mars or is her brain damaged? She says just because she eats three meals a day in his place, she is tolerating all this. Then she hugs him and says that she needs that money, because she must pay her daughter's school fees with that. Zhang Yu swears to pay her, and she immediately asks him what he was going to eat. He says that he doesn't have enough ingredients because he doesn't have enough money. The landlady says that her daughter was going to have lunch with her friend, so she bought the ingredients beforehand. She goes back, and when she just was returning, her daughter comes there and confronts her. She lies by saying that she is just helping Zhang Yu, but her daughter doesn't buy her lies. Just then, Zhang Yu rushes there and tells the daughter of the landlady that her mother was telling the truth. She was just sympathizing with him, and she even forgave his rent for this month. He's just cooking dinner for her as thanks. The girl listens to him and trusts him. She even tells him to cook dinner at their place. Zhang Yu agrees with her proposal. He even says that she was looking much beautiful than last time, to which the landlady gets angry and tells Zhang Yu to stop flirting with her daughter. Zhang Yu says that he was not flirting, he was just complimenting her, and he has no such intentions towards her daughter. He tells the girl to get the ingredients at her place and that he will cook them dinner after he returns. Yan Chu tells her mother that she misunderstood. The reason why she's not going to her friend's house is their financial condition is way different than the financial condition of her friend. And usually her friend is the one who visits them and she only went to her friend's house once. Furthermore, her friend's mother likes to boast a lot and she doesn't want to meet her. On the other hand, Zhang Yu is waiting at the bus stand and soon he begins to count down the remaining minutes. The bus arrives exactly on time. But when the bus stopped at the bus stand, a girl told her father to stop the car. This girl is none other than Yuji. Her father asks her the reason for this and she tells him to wait while she looks at the bus. Here she recognizes Zhang Yu and she tells her father to follow the bus. Her father asks her what's wrong and she says that she will explain everything later and for now, just follow the bus. Meanwhile on the bus, Zhang Yu notices a very beautiful girl. He thinks that today is a very lucky day for him because he even got the chance to look at such a beautiful girl on the bus. But soon Zhang Yu notices a man who is standing behind the girl. He's a pervert and is staring at the girl's body. Zhang Yu is angry at the man and he thinks that he has to inform the girl somehow. Meanwhile, the girl is busy using her phone and she is not aware of anything happening around her. Zhang Yu thinks that the girl is using SNS so he decides to add her. As the girl receives the friend request sent by Zhang Yu, she first thinks about what type of name this is. But she soon realizes that it is not a name but a warning about a pervert. And as she glances back, she sees the pervert. The girl adds Zhang Yu and asks him who he is. Zhang Yu replies that it doesn't matter who he is, he just wanted to warn her. Zhang Yu tells her that an old man is getting on the bus and she should give her seat to that old man and use his chance to get away from that pervert. He also tells the girl to stay calm. The girl does exactly what Zhang Yu told her to do and she moves away from the pervert and ends up standing right next to Zhang Yu. The girl thanks Zhang Yu and asks him where he's standing. Zhang Yu says to the girl that she'll have to guess that, but she only has one chance and if she is wrong, she'll have to tell Zhang Yu her name. The girl looks around, but she's not able to find him, so she gives up and tells Zhang Yu that there are a lot of people on the bus who are using their phones. She tells Zhang Yu that her name is Shang Guan Tianyun, and she also asks for his name. Zhang Yu tells Tianyun that his name is Zhang Yu and says to her that he's a nice person, and he is not like the pervert who likes to look at people's bodies. The pervert starts to accuse the old man of stepping on his shoes, and the old man tells him that he has some misunderstanding, because the old man always keeps his feet in front of him, but he didn't step on the pervert's shoes. The pervert gets angry and tightly grabs the old man's head and says to the old man, how dare the old man lie to him. He is standing right next to the old man's seat and there is a footmark on his shoe. If the old man didn't do it, was it him who stepped on his shoes? The old man's head hurts and he starts to lose his senses. The pervert grabs the old man by his collar and starts to yell at him. Just then, Tan Yu says to the pervert to let the old man go. She's recorded everything, and he will not let the old man go, she will post the video. The pervert slaps the old man hard and throws him towards Tan Yu while saying that he doesn't care, she should post it, and he also wants to be famous. Just then, Zhang Yu steps up and pulls Tian back, and to save the old man, he tells Tan Yu to take care of the old man and call the police. Then he confronts the pervert who is trying to escape. He stops him and says to the pervert that he can't leave and that he will have to stay, and that he will have to take responsibility for his actions. 
The pervert tells Zhang Yu to mind his own business, otherwise he'll beat him up while pointing his finger towards Zhang Yu. Zhang Yu breaks his finger and tells him that the only thing he hates in this world is when someone points their finger at him. The pervert says to Zhang Yu to let him go and that they will discuss this matter secretly. Zhang Yu says they can discuss this matter secretly, but the old man is suffering from epilepsy and now they will have to wait for the old man family to come there and take care of this matter. The pervert says to Zhang Yu that he should just name his price and let this matter go. Zhang Yu says to the pervert that he should pay up to 50 million yuan and then they will discuss this matter secretly. The pervert gets angry and says to Zhang Yu that he is a member of the Black Dragon Tea Party, and Zhang Yu will suffer for this. Zhang Yu asks what they do, they sell tea. A pervert in anger yells at the mafia organization and tries to punch Zhang Yu, but Zhang Yu kicks him so hard that he falls on the ground with a broken tooth. Soon the police arrive there and arrest the pervert. Meanwhile, the old man loses consciousness and Zhang Yu uses a technique to get the old man's condition under control. Tian asks Zhang Yu if he could try to save the old man using some needles and acupuncture techniques. Zhang Yu replies to her, in that case, they should bet if Zhang Yu can save the old man. Tian will try to have to treat him to a meal, and if Zhang Yu loses, he will treat Tian to a meal. But Zhang Yu saves the old man and wins the bet. While they were going to eat, Tian thinks that she has been tricked by Zhang Yu, and no matter what the outcome would have been, she was bound to go out and eat with Zhang Yu. But she also thinks that Zhang Yu is very talented. He uses a few needles and some simple steps to help the old man, and she's met a lot of doctors in her life. But Zhang Yu is different. Just then, she asks Zhang Yu where they'll have lunch. Zhang Yu says that they are almost there. Meanwhile, Zhu Zi sees Zhang Yu along with Tian. She thinks that if they are both couples, why are they standing at a distance from each other? Zhu Yu's father asks her if Tian was her classmate, but she says that Tian is a nurse at her school. Then her father asks if Zhang Yu is Zhu Yu's boyfriend and if he is cheating on her. But Zhu Yu tells him that was not the case, and she tells him that they must go, because she has an appointment with the doctor. Soon, they leave and inside the restaurant, Tian meets Zhang Yu's two childhood friends who are nicknamed Monkey and Black Bear. Monkey says to Zhang Yu that he should have informed them if he was bringing his girlfriend with them. They could have gone to a much fancier restaurant. But Tian corrects him and tells him that she and Zhang Yu have just met. They are just friends. Monkey and Black Bear are goofing around while Tian notices that they call Zhang Yu Hung Ghost. So she asks the name for it. They tell Tian that all three of them are childhood friends and Zhang Yu in the past was the tallest among them. He was always sick and his face looked pale, all the time. Plus he had a bad habit of sticking at his tongue. Sometime later, Tian leaves the restaurant and Zhang Yu tells his friends that there are a lot of beauties like her at Xiangchong School. And soon he has to go there, so if they want they can tag along with him. When he visits Xiangchong School, both Monkey and Black Bear agree to this, and they are very excited. At the school, Black Bear and Monkey tell Zhang Yu to go and find his fiance while they look for some beauties. As they were leaving, someone tapping on Zhang Yu's shoulder. Zhang Yu looks back and it was Miss Tong. She thanks him for saving Yu Ji and says to him that she wants to invite him to a meal. And she asks for his number and suggests that they can add each other on WeChat. Zhang Yu tells her to add him on WeChat and says that his number is in there. After adding her, Zhang Yu says to her that if she wants to buy him a meal, she should invite him soon. When Zhang Yu leaves Miss Tung's messages, Yu Ji and tells her that she got Dr. Zhang's number. Miss Tung sends Dr. Zhang to Yu Ji and Yu Ji calls her father and asks him to investigate Zhang Yu. She says that Zhang means Panda and Yu means universe. She also gives her father Zhang Yu's number. On the other hand, Zhang Yu meets up with Hang Yin and asks her if she's made up her mind and when will they marry. Hang Yin says to Zhang Yu that she will never marry someone that she just met, and if her grandfather forced her, she would go abroad and she will never come back to China. Then Hong Yin offers a job to Zhang Yu, and Zhang Yu says that even Dr. Miao Ri knows that he doesn't have any professional license. Hong Yin says that Dr. Miao Ri is her friend and she will never tell anyone about this. Although Zhang Yu was planning on rejecting the job, when he hears his starting salary of 10,000 won, he agrees. He even asks Hong Yin to give him 3,000 won in advance. He tells her that he needs his money to pay for the two months' rent that he already owes to his landlady, and in exchange, he will give her a massage. Hong Yin slaps him and gives him the money. While walking out, Zhang Yu is happy that he got the money, but suddenly hears a faint voice of a girl. After focusing, he finds out that the girl's life was in danger, and currently she's in the female dorm. Zhang Yu rushes towards the female dorm, and the warden tells him to stop. She says that this is a female dorm, and he can't enter there without registration. Zhang Yu tells her that they don't have time, and tells her to call the police. When he enters the room, he sees a girl who is lying on the bed, and some kind of foam was coming out of her mouth. Soon, the warden also comes there with guards, and she tells Zhang Yu that this is a female dorm, and he has to leave. She tells the guards to escort Zhang Yu out, but Zhang Yu stops them and says to them that they should not disturb him while he is treating the girl. The warden looks at the girl and says that it was Tian Lung. She asks what is wrong with her. While another girl was standing silently and observing everything, Zhang Yu looked at the other girl and said he was lucky. If today Zhang Yu would not have been there, he would have been charged and sent to prison for murder. The girl suddenly spoke up in a male voice and asked Zhang Yu 
if Tianlong Long could be saved. Just then he realizes he has blown his cover, and the warden once snatches the wig off the boy's head and tells the guards to take him away. When she looks back, she sees Zhang Yu kissing Lian Ting. She asks him what he is doing, and Zhang Yu says that he is giving Lian Ting artificial breathing, and with the help of an acupuncture, she will soon be fine. Just then, Lian Ting starts to wake up, and she starts saying, Jing Shen Kong, don't kill me. Zhang Yu tells her that everything was okay now and that the culprit was arrested. Lian Ting asks Zhang Yu if he was the one who saved her. Zhang Yu tells her that he heard her voice, and luckily he got there on time. Otherwise, she could have lost her life. Just then, Zhang Yu gets a message from Monkey, in which Monkey tells Zhang Yu that the black bear was getting beaten in the schoolyard. Meanwhile, in the schoolyard, a Taekwondo practitioner was beating Black Bear for looking at his girlfriend. Black Bear tells him that he doesn't know who his girlfriend is, but the Taekwondo practitioner doesn't listen to him. Suddenly, Zhang Yu comes there and hits the Taekwondo practitioner and saves Black Bear. As Zhang Yu is going to take revenge for his friend, Miss Tong tries to stop him, and says that this is all just a misunderstanding. Zhang Yu says that she's just trying to save a student, and that if it was Black Bear beating the student, which she called a misunderstanding even then, Ms. Dong tells him that the Taekwondo club of the school is very strong and that the student was one of the aces of the Taekwondo club. So she tries to stop Zhang Yu and tells him to calm down. But Zhang Yu didn't listen to her, and he went to that student. He said to that student that he has to get down on his knees and ask the black bear for forgiveness. Zhang Yu and Guan Ping start their fight. Guan Ping tries to kick Zhang Yu, but Zhang Yu easily blocks it. Everyone is shocked to learn that Zheng Yu knows martial arts. But as Zheng Yu and Guan Ping are fighting, a man who is watching all this says that Zheng Yu is martial art is good, and he can even go against Guan Ping. That man wants to compete with Zheng Yu, but just then Guan Ping tries to kick Zheng Yu. Guan Ping thinks he knows Zheng Yu's weak point, so he uses his most powerful technique and attacks him. But Zheng Yu says that he never exposed his weak point, but on the other hand, Guan Ping's weak point is visible. Zhang Yu uses Li Ba by technique and attacks Guan Ping's manhood. Guan Ping falls on his knee because of pain and everyone is shocked. Zhang Yu goes to his friends and help him. He tells Miss Tong that she was right and all of this is just a misunderstanding. He tells her to move because he wants to take Black Bear to the hospital. Guan Ping asks Zhang Yu his name and he says to Zhang Yu that he will take revenge for everything. Zhang Yu says to him that he can try whenever he wants, but for now, he should stop this nonsense. And go to the hospital because he's already hurt badly. When Guan Ping and his fellows left, Black Bear and Monkey say to Zhang Yu that he should teach them martial arts too, so that way they won't be bullied. Just then, Zhang Yu gets a call and when he tells his friends that he has to pick up the call. This call is from the landlady. She's angry and she yells at Zhang Yu. She says to Zhang Yu that he promised to cook dinner for them, but he is late. Where is he? Zhang Yu tells Monkey that he used to go and tells him to take care of Black Bear. After saying that, Zhang Yu jumps off from that place. Black Bear says to Monkey that he thinks Zhang Yu is just a loss for years technique. Zhang Yu arrives in front of his building and he goes to the landlady's home. He apologizes for being late and as he enters, he sees many people there. They all introduce themselves and the landlady tells Zhang Yu that they are all boarding house guests. Xiao Lindeng and her child live in Zhang Yu's apartment, and Xiao Rozhen and Ling Teng Zheng live opposite him. She told them that Zhang Yu cooked very well and she invited all of them for dinner, as it was up to Zhang Yu to save face for her. Zhang Yu at once starts cooking at an amazing speed. Soon he comes back to the room with a lot of dishes. He thanks them for waiting and tells them that they originally, he wanted to prepare a Chinese meal for ancient emperors. But because of a lack of ingredients, he could only make 20 dishes, and he apologizes for that. Zhang Yu tells them that the table was ready and they can eat. As everyone starts eating, they can't help but admire Zhang Yu's cooking skills. Xiao Ru Zhen says to Zhang Yu that his cooking skills are way superior to Mrs. Fatty and Ling Ting's skills. Ling Ting agrees and says that Zhang Yu's skills are way superior to the skills of the cooks who are working at the same restaurant as Ling Ting. She suggests Zhang Yu join her restaurant and says that she will introduce him to her boss and they will pay him a salary of 4,000 yuan per month. Lin Ting Jing couldn't stop himself and said how can Mrs. Zhao call her workplace a restaurant, it's more like a street stall, as they only have one to two waiters there. Zhang Yu thanks Lin Ting for her offer and tells her that he already has a job and he is going to start work soon. Lin Tian Zheng says to Zhang Yu that Zhang Yu didn't go to school so he is not educated, right? What kind of work can he do? Is it a station worker job? Xiao Ru Zhen stops him and says to Lin Ting Zheng what he is saying, how can Zhang Yu work as a station worker? But Ling Ting Zheng says Zhang Yu isn't educated much, so he can only work as a station worker or as a waiter. Then Lian Lady says to Ling Ting Zheng that his words are way too harsh. He knows that Zhang Ling Ting is a waitress, but still has to say these things to hurt others. 
Zheng Lingting says to the landlady that it was okay. Zheng Yu says that his job is also not a good time. Lingting Zheng says that it is likely what he said. Without high education, how can Zheng Yu find a good job? He and Xia Ru worked way too hard to get hired by the Long Corporation, and it is the best workplace for anyone. The landlady's daughter in surprise asked him if it was true. Her mother asked what was so surprising about that. Is Long Corporation very well known? She tells the landlady that Long Corporation was founded by Long Young Shen, who is one of the richest people in the city. And Long Corporation is one of the top three companies in the city, and it is the dream workplace for students like her. She asks Ling Ting Zheng that his salary and interest are very high. He tells her that he makes 7,000 won every month. Then he asks Zheng Yu about his salary. Zheng Yu says that it's not much, the basic salary is 10,000 won, which shocked Ling Ting Zheng. Ling Ting Zheng says that Zheng Yu is just boasting about how a peasant with a no high level of education can earn this much. He refuses to believe that. Zheng Yu gives the money that he got a while back to the landlady as rent. So Ling Ting Zheng comes up with a different idea to save himself from embarrassment. He suggests drinking, but he ends up losing this time too. Sometime later, someone knocks at the door, and when Long Zhu opens it, he sees Mao Zhuji. Zhang Yu looks outside and sees Zhu Zi. She asks Zhu Zi about her health and why she didn't rest at her home today. Zhu Zi tells her that she is fine now and she's just taking a walk when she remembered that Zhang Yu lived here. She came to visit her. Zhang Yu tells Yu Zi that Zhang Yu is their boarding house guest and says that Yu Zi should come in to have a meal. Zhang Yu cooks well. After eating, Zhu Zi admires Zhang Yu's cooking and asks him if his major was cooking. Zhang Yu says to Yu Zi that his cooking skills are just basic, and as for his major, his major is Chinese traditional medicine. His strength is curing people, essentially girls who faint. There is one way to do that, and that is artificial breathing. After hearing this, Zhu Yu's face turns red. Zhang Yu notices this and thinks that there is something between Zhang Yu and Zhu Zi. So she immediately tells her mother to come and help her in the kitchen, just to give Zhu Zi and Zhang Yu some alone time, so they can take care of the things between them. As she leaves, Zhu Yu asks Zhang Yu about everything that has happened in the morning. Zhang Yu pretends to be innocent and asks her what she is talking about. Zhu Yu in frustration yells and says to him that she was the girl who fainted and asks him what treatment he used on her. Zhang Yu says to her that the main treatment was artificial breathing, and as for sub-treatment, he massaged her chest to relieve her of any stress. Zhu Yu then tells Zhang Yu to be honest with her about her medical condition. Zhang Yu says that she can choose whether she wants the truth or the lie. The lie is that she can be saved by modern medical treatment, and as for the truth, only he can save her. Zhu Yu tells him to stop lying and she lets this one slide because he saved her. But if he tries to take advantage of her, he knows her father's job is, and her father will not let Zhang Yu go. As Zhu leaves, Yan Zhu says to Zhang Yu that she didn't think that Zhang Yu was so evil, that he will take advantage of a fainted girl. Zhang Yu tries to explain the situation, but just then Zhang Yu's mother opens the door, and the door hits Zhang Yu's back because of which Zhang Yu ends up grabbing Yan Zhu's chest by accident. The landlady in anger slaps Zhang Yu and tells him how dare he take advantage of her daughter. Zhang Yu goes to his room and is trying to understand Yu Ji's medical condition, but just then Zhang Yu hears Lin Ting Zhao yelling at Shou Zhen. He goes to hear what they are saying and he finds out that Lin Ting Zheng was accusing Shou Zhen about having an affair with Zhang Yu, and in the heat of the moment he slaps Shou Zhen. Shou Zhen says to Lin Ting Zheng that they have been dating for the last three years, and in these three years he has been there three times, just because he suspects that she has an affair with other men. She is done with him and it's over between them, and it's time to break up. Lin Ting Zheng tries to stop Shou Zhen and says that he still loves her, but Shou Zhen leaves the apartment. Lin Ting Zheng follows her and tries to stop her. Meanwhile, Zhang Yu is watching all this and he thinks that they are headed by the street, and it's the middle of the night, and bad things happen there. Soon Shou Zhen runs into some goons who start to harass her. She tells them to back off otherwise she will call the police, but the goons threaten her with a knife, and she warns them that Lin Ting Zheng would beat them if they didn't stop. But instead of defending her, Lin Ting Zheng offers the man some money to let them go. The goon takes the money and threatens Lin Ting Zheng and says that he should have left, that they should still have some business with this woman. Lin Ting Zheng thinks that he still has his career and his life to worry about, so he runs away, leaving Shou Zhen behind. Shou Zhen calls him a coward, but as the goons were close to her, she prays for someone to help her. Just then, Zhang Yu comes there. He tells the goons to get their dirty hands off Shou Zhen. Shou Zhen asks for Zhang Yu's help and tells him that these men were trying to harm her. The boss of the group warns Zhang Yu that they belong to Black Dragon Tea Union and the situation will end up becoming bad for him, so he should leave. Zhang Yu says that he is not a fan of quarreling, so they should just fight. One of the goons is the same person who is on the bus and tries to attack Zhang Yu to take his revenge. Zhang Yu easily defeats him and then he beats the rest of the goons and shaves Shou Zhen. He says to her that she should leave and find a hotel for herself. Shou Zhen thanks him and tells him that all of her money was taken. Zhang Yu thinks that he came here in a hurry so he doesn't have any money with him, and because of her injury, she can't go to her company place. Just then, Shou Zhen asks Zhang Yu that if she could spend the night at his place. 
He unties Shorujun and tells her that he knows traditional medicine, and he can do acupuncture on her to help with her facial injuries. He tells her that she can sleep on the bed and that he will sleep on the floor. Shorujun thanks Shun Yu and talks about his medical skills. He says that he learned Chinese medicine. Shorujun says that things must be hard for him, and it'll be quite hard for him to get a job. Shun Yu further tells him that it's unfortunate that he still hasn't got his professional license. So they arrive at the building, and Zheng Yu tells Shadow Zhen that her apartment light was on, which means Lin Tun Zheng made it back. Shadow Zhen tells Zheng Zhu to go first as she's used the public washroom, but instead she goes back to her old apartment and hears the sounds that were coming from the apartment. Lin Tun Zheng brought his boss home, and they were making love while throwing dirt on Shadow Zhen's name. They are talking about the fun time that they had during the office, and Zheng Yu Shen says to Lin Tun Zheng that he thinks that she is not as beautiful as Shadow Zhen. Lin Tian Zheng tells her that Shou Zhen couldn't even compare to her. He says that he broke the relationship as soon as he found out that Shou Zhen had an affair with Zhang Yu. Then Zhang Zhu Zhen asks about the relationship, and she promises that she'll treat her way better than Shou Zhen. As they start to make love, Shou Zhen, who was standing outside, was furious. She was show Lin Tian Zheng that she was happy without him, and she goes back to Zhang Yu's apartment. Zhang Yu says to her that he was waiting for her, and he has even sanitized the silver needles. She should tell him where her wounds are. Shadow Zhen says to him their wounds are not visible with her dress on. Meanwhile, she is saying in her mind that Lin Tung Zheng made the first move, and he can't blame her now. She suggests that she'll take off her dress, because of which it will be easier for Zheng Yu to treat her. After he treats her, Zheng Yu tells her to calm down while he has a nosebleed. He says that he is not the kind of man who will take advantage of a girl. Now, Shadow Zhen says to Zheng Yu that the bed was big enough for both, and that he shouldn't sleep on the floor because it will be bad for his health. Further, she can't allow him to sleep on the floor after he helped her so much. Zheng Yu insists that if she trusts him that much, she will. Zheng Yu contemplates how anyone can control themselves in the situation that he is in. He then shifts his focus towards preparing himself for his hospital visit tomorrow, and making sure he doesn't take advantage of Xiao Zhen, using his powers to control his inner desires. The next day, Xiao Zhen wakes up and notices that Zheng Yu is hard as wood, and decides to find the landlord to get herself another room, while Zheng Yu sleeps. Shadow Zhen opens the door and sees Lin Tan Zheng and his boss, Shi Lun, standing outside. Lin Tan Zheng asks Shadow Zhen why she is coming out of Zhang Yu's room. Lin Tan Zheng and Shen Lun start accusing her of sleeping with Zhang Yu only a day after breaking up with him and moving in with him. Shadow Zhen yells at them, telling them to stop accusing her of all these things. Lin Tan Zheng thanks Shadow Zhen for breaking up with him so that he can finally be with Shen Lun now. Zheng Yu grabs Shou Zhen and tells him that Lin Tian Zheng is saying thank you for leaving Ru Zhen so he could meet her and to stay out of their business. Zheng Chen Lin says to Lin Tian Zheng that they should go and that they shouldn't waste their time here. Lin Tian Zheng while leaving glares at Zheng Yu and warns him that he'll be keeping eyes on him. On the other hand, Zheng Yu doesn't care about his words. Shou Zhen thanks Zheng Yu for his help and asks him why he was wearing a suit. Zheng Yu tells her that he has to go to a hospital as it was his first day of work, so he just changed into this suit. While leaving, he says to Shou Zhen that he only wanted to help her, so she shouldn't take his words seriously. But Shou Zhen thinks in her mind that if only Zheng Yu took it seriously while blushing. Later, Zheng Yu meets with Hong Yin, who warns him that he only has three months, and if his skills are not good, he should just get out of the hospital. Then she tells him that the hospital was just straight ahead and tells him to follow her. Zheng Yu says to her that she doesn't have to worry about his skills, she already knows them. Hong Yin tells Zheng Yu that the traditional Chinese department doesn't have many doctors, and including Zheng Yu. There are only three of them. She tells him to be nice and to not make trouble for her. But Zheng Yu didn't say anything, and as she turns back, Zheng Yu is gone. But she soon finds him talking to Tan Yun. Tan Yun says to Zheng Yu that it was surprising that she could meet Zheng Yu here. Zheng Yu tells her that he has been employed in the traditional Chinese department, and they are colleagues now. She says to Zheng Yu that she has to buy him a meal and ask him if he was free today. Zheng Yu tells her that he will be waiting for her call. Hong Yin says that it's good for Zheng Yu. He even started flirting with girls on his very first day at work. Zheng Yu says to her that he has no feelings for other girls. His heart only belongs to her. She tells him that his department is located on the top floor of the hospital and she has to go there by himself because she has other work to do. She again tells him not to bother her. In the hospital, Zheng Yu thinks that the hospital is full of beauty. Just then he notices a doctor who was telling his patient that her health condition was like this because her endocrine system is not normal. And she just has to take care of her health and notice her sleep timing and she will soon be okay. Zheng Yu intercepts them and says that according to his diagnosis, the girl's pregnant. The other doctor asks him who he was and Zheng Yu tells him that he is the new intern at the traditional Chinese department.
The doctor tells him to mind his work. Zheng Yu says that if the girl thinks he's right, she can come to his department to look for him and leaves. Zheng Yu goes to the traditional Chinese department and meets with the head of the department. But soon they are interrupted and when the head of the department goes to check, it was the same girl from before. And she came there with her friend to meet Zheng Yu. After looking at new patients, the head of the department says it's good for Zheng Yu. Today is his first day at this job and he found himself a patient. The head of the department tells the girl that Zheng Yu is inside. The girl asks Zheng Yu about what he said before at the internal medicine department. Zheng Yu interrupts her and says that if she wants to know if he is telling the truth. The girl agrees and Zheng Yu says to the girl that she should know her health. The girl says that Dr. Li said something else. Zheng Yu, after hearing this, turns his face to the other side and says if she trusts Dr. Li that much, why did she come here? It's such a shame, now he can't even turn around to talk to her. The girl at once apologizes, but her friend stops her. She says to her that Zheng must be playing some tricks. She slams her hand on the desk and warns Zheng Yu that she will complain about this. On the way out, she tells Zheng Yu to wait for his punishment while her friend is trying to calm her down. On the other hand, Zheng Yu doesn't care much and says it's up to her. She can do whatever she wants. At the same time, Zheng Yu is thinking that this girl should make it as big as she possibly can, because he can make use of that to rebuild a good reputation for traditional Chinese medicine. Soon, Zheng Yu is called by manager Jin, who tells Zheng Yu that he has got a complaint on his first day at work, and as it is his first day, she will only take 1001 as a punishment, and he will also have to apologize to the complainer, and if there is nothing else, he should just sign these papers. Zheng Yu says to manager Jin why she didn't ask him about his side of the story, and just punishes him directly. Manager Jin says the girl has no hatred toward Zheng Yu, so why did she complain about him? Zheng Yu says to her that in the case, he would also like to complain about Manager Jin for her behavior. But Manager Jin says that she's the sister of Principal Mi. Zheng Yu can do what he wants. But Zheng Yu notices that Manager Jin was not healthy, so he says that he won't complain about her, instead he is a gift for her. Zheng Yu takes out some medicine from his pocket which angers Manager Jin. But just when she gets hyper, she starts to feel pain in her heart and blood comes out of her mouth. As she's about to fall, Zheng Yu holds her and takes her to the infirmary. Soon Tai Yun and Dr. Li also comes there and Zheng Yu tells Tian Yun to get out to his office and bring his bag. Tian Yun listens to his orders and quickly goes to the traditional Chinese medicine department. Dr. Li tries to stop Zheng Yu, but Zheng Yu gets furious and says to him that if manager Jin lost her life, he will be the killer. Meanwhile, Tian Yun tries to find Zheng Yu's bag and she comes across Ms. Tang's bra. Tian Yun brings a bag and gives to Zheng Yu. Zheng Yu looks at Tian's face while sanitizing the silver needles and asks her why her face is pink. Tian tells him that it must be because she was running. While Zheng Yu was looking away, she thinks that Zheng Yu doesn't look like a pervert who will steal the undergarments of women. Zheng Yu tells Tian that she can take a rest, he will handle things on his own now. She says okay and tells him that she will go first and change and then she will buy him lunch. At the same time, she's thinking of asking Zheng Yu about the bra. Meanwhile, Zhang Yu looks at manager Jin and thinks that her condition is not good, so he must start his treatment as soon as possible. But Dr. Li interrupts him. Zhang Yu says to him what he was still doing here, but Dr. Li starts to complain about Zhang Yu's treatment, and Zhang Yu, instead of stopping Dr. Li or arguing with him, he makes fun of Dr. Li. After the treatment, Zhang Yu says to Dr. Li that he is done here, and if they would like to thank him, they should bring him a gift for the traditional medicine department. He also tells Dr. Li that manager Jin will be waking up soon. As Zheng Yu leaves, manager Jin wakes up, but she thinks it was Dr. Li who saved her and she thanks him. Dr. Li didn't tell her the truth and just said that her condition is not good, so she should not get angry. She once again thanks him and says that she would not forgive Zheng Yu. Dr. Li tells her not to worry, he will make sure that Zheng Yu loses face. Meanwhile, Zheng Yu runs into the girl that he saved in the female dorm. She tells Zheng Yu that when she heard he was working in the hospital, she came to visit him. Zheng Yu says to the girl that she hasn't fully recovered and tells her to come to the Chinese traditional medicine department for a check. The girl does that and while Zheng Yu is checking her pulse, Zheng Yu notices something. She says to the girl that her condition can be enhanced, but she'll have to be honest with him. He says, has she been smoking, drinking, and staying up late? What is she doing? The girl says that she can't keep this thing secret from him. In reality, she's been working at a bar for two years. She did so because of two reasons. First, her ex is from a poor family, so she helped him whenever he asked for money. But she soon found out that he'd been cheating on her, so she broke up with him. And on the day when Zheng Yu saved her, it was her ex who tried to kill her. And the second reason is that the bar where she works belongs to the Black Dragon Tea community. And whenever she tries to resign, they threaten her. The girl starts to cry, and Zheng Yu calms her down. Zheng Yu gives her a prescription and tells her to take the medicine and to come back here after half a month. The girl thanks Zheng Yu and leaves. Zheng Yu thinks it's the Black Dragon Tea community again. Can't they do anything good? 
Just then, Ting Yun comes and asks him why he was standing blankly there, and she tells him that they should go and that she'll buy him lunch. Zheng Yu says that he will call Monkey and Bear too. On the way, Tian Yun says to Zheng Yu that there are many restaurants in that place and he can pick one. Zheng Yu says that he is not familiar with this place, so Tian should pick the restaurant. She tells him that the grilled fish store is very good, and they decide to go there. Meanwhile, Monkey asks Bear when they will have girlfriends like Zheng Yu, and Black Bear says that it is only possible if they are both the last surviving men on this planet. In the restaurant, they were talking when Young Fei Wu sees them. She comes there and greeted Zheng Yu. Zheng Yu says to her that it was very difficult to recognize her in this dress. Fei Wu apologizes to her friend and tells Young Yu that she tried to stop her. Zheng Yu says that it was okay and offers to join them for lunch, but she was there with her boyfriend Guan Ping, who got furious after seeing Zheng Yu. And when she tells him that she was pregnant and it was Dr. Zheng who told her, that he accused Zheng Yu and Fei Wu for having a relationship, and to try to play tricks on him just to get abortion money, in anger he throws his pores towards Fei Wu. Young Xu saves her in time by throwing a needle towards the purse with such force that the purse and the needle get stuck on the wall. Zhang Yu says to Guanping, How can he call himself a man if he can only take out his anger on a woman? Guanping tells Zhang Yu to mind his own business, and then he says that he is not in the mood to quarrel and tries to leave. But Zhang Yu stops him and tells him that he still has to apologize to Fei Wu. Guanping again tells him to mind his own business, but Zhang Yu says to him that they should bet, and if Guanping loses, he will have to apologize to Fei Wu. Guanping says that if he wins, Zheng Yu will have to become a subordinate for one month. Zheng Yu says that he is okay with the terms and that he bets that in three months, Black Bear will beat Guanping. Guanping smirks and says that although Zheng Yu has some skills, his friend Black Bear is like a kid to Guanping. Black Bear asks Zheng Yu if he will be able to defeat Guanping. Zheng Yu says that he will teach them martial arts and they still have three months. While everyone is excited after hearing this, Guanping says that he will for three months and then he will beat them all. Zheng Yu goes to Fei Wu to check her situation and she thanks him for what he did. She again asks if what Zheng Yu said in the morning is true. If it is, then she will have to go to a boarding. Zheng Yu tells her that it was true, but he had a different method, which is way safer. She wants to try. Fei Wu says that she needs time to think about it and she will let him know. When she leaves, Black Bear asks Zheng Yu about her and tells Zheng Yu to introduce him to Fei Wu. Zheng Yu remembers that Black Bear was beaten by Guan Ping because he was looking at Fei Wu, and he asks Black Bear if he likes Fei Wu. Black Bear agrees and tells Zheng Yu and asks him to pay the bill, and tells him that he will introduce him to Fei Wu later. Black Bear says to Zheng Yu that it has become much worse than we were kids. Tian asks Monkey if Zheng Yu was naughty when he was a kid. Monkey tells her that he was addicted to teasing girls. Tian thinks that this is the case why Zheng Yu had that bra. But just then, Zheng Yu hits Monkey and says to Tian that he was a good kid. Don't listen to Monkey's nonsense. Monkey says, yeah, very good, and tells Tian that Zheng Yu even kissed a widow in their village once. Zheng Yu explains to Tianwen that the widow was a 12-year-old kid, and she was a lesser wife of an old man. But she was 14, the old man passed away, so they called her a widow. He kissed her just to make some memories with her, and as they left the restaurant, the worker tells the owner that she can come outside after they have left. It turns out to be the same widow girl who Zheng Yu was talking about. Zheng Yu starts the martial arts training from the very basics. He gives his friends a pole to practice their balance for at least 40 minutes per day, if they are serious about defeating Guan Ping Zhen. While the guys are busy pole dancing, Zheng receives a call from his fiance, Qiu Hong Xin. She asks about the mess with manager Jin, and he believes him when he blames her behavioral issue to the reason. She adds that Miao Ran wants to invite them to have dinner together this evening. He immediately agrees to join. Qiu Hong asks if she could bring another person, and Miao Ran agrees. She asks why Qiu Hong hates him this much, even though their families are so close. Even this question about him irritates the Kyushu Zheng, and she replies that she hates overconfident guys. Meanwhile, Tang Leng bumps into Zheng on her way to her job. Zheng tells her that she should resign and find some other job that does not take a toll on her health. To get rid of this job, Tang Leng is already going back to the Black Dragon Tea Commune. She realizes that that place is dangerous, but if she hands over the full compensation fee, they will let her go. As she leaves, Zheng sees her from behind, wondering why his fiance could not be nice like her. Because of that strict woman, he has to work in the school's hospital. Later, he runs into Mia Ren, who congratulates him for becoming her colleague. She's optimistic that with his skills and humbleness, he will soon become the most well-known doctor in the school. He asks if the dinner table has been booked yet and gets to know that Kyu Hong selected the grilled fish store, the one where he ate earlier as well. However, since he's going there with a different beauty this time, it's all good. He notices the same two guys from Black Dragon Gang whose only purpose in life is to get beaten up by Zheng, accompanied by Tianlang. He hopes that everything works out for her without any trouble. 
Zheng Yu and Miao Ran arrive at the goldfish store and he asks if the reason Hong Jin invited him is to make peace with him. While having lewd thoughts about his thick fiance, he enters the room first with a rose held between his lips. All his wet dreams are gone when he sees purple haired third wheeler guy in there. The casual dinner turns into a roundtable conference with an awkward atmosphere. Miao Ran tries to break the silence by telling Hong Jin that she should not have bothered Director Long to take out time from his busy schedule. She replies that this VIP room is booked thanks to him and his large social connections, otherwise he would have to wait in line. That's just a plain lie because the real reason he's there is to humiliate Zheng Yu. Mr. Long with his long, ugly spikes says that it is his pleasure to help Hong Jin and asks Miao Ran if he likes the dishes he selected. Zheng Yu intervenes saying that the food tastes great while piling up the mountains of empty bowls by his side. Long uses this opportunity to humiliate Zheng Yu by saying that a peasant like him must have never experienced such atmosphere and tastes, so he shall take those dishes with him as this might be the only time he is getting to eat them. Zheng wraps all the food in the tablecloth and thanks Long as he is really on a pinch regarding this month's food. Hong Jun finds him embarrassing and tries to put some sense into him, but he replies that he's already handed over all 3,000 won to his landlord, so he has no money to eat. She understands how cleverly he sneaked his intention of asking for more money. He then tries to emotionally blackmail her by saying with tears in his eyes if she would let her fiancé die in a 5 by 6 room. Miao Ren is surprised that people can actually live in such a small space, and Long mocks him by saying that it's his laziness that is the reason why he's poor. Zheng sarcastically agrees and says that Long's persistent efforts are quite obvious to him, seeing how hard he's trying to impress Hong Jin. Long gets triggered and states that Zheng can never rise up to his ranks, even in dreams, but Zheng responds that he would choose middle class life over anything, as that is what real life is. Hong Jun is getting irritated as she did not expect Long to be the one getting humiliated, and tries to think of some other way to cancel this engagement. Long calls himself and says that Zheng would not suit Hong Jin, so he should not let them be a couple. Zheng asks if he truly loves Hong Jin and he responds that he does, but Zheng starts teasing him by saying that he thinks he is lying and it would feel pathetic to be in love with someone else's fiance. Realizing that Long can never win at this game, Hong Jin tells him to stop the stool and continue with their meal. Zheng leaves the room to get drinks for everyone and overhears some strange noises from the room. The door of that room is slightly open, so Zheng sees Tan Ling being grabbed by her. While she is lying on the sofa, the two losers cannot decide who will be going first, so another person joins them to solve the matter. Fortunately, this person is Zheng Yu, who makes sure that they do have a memorable time, although what they will remember their whole life is getting brutally beaten up. After throwing them out of the room, Tianglong hung Zheng from behind and thanks him for the help, and offers a better way to express her gratitude. Zheng may be a pervert, but he is man enough to not take advantage of a drunk girl, at least not to that level. Zheng realizes that those losers put drugs in her drink to make her vulnerable, and now he's the one having a difficult time in controlling himself. He apologizes in advance and then sticks his needle in her butt, literally. By his needles, we are talking about the acupuncture needles that will help her sleep for a while and relieve the alcohol in her body. He brings her back to their room where Long praises Zheng for going up for a few minutes and coming back with another lady. Hong Jin asks what Zheng Yu did to her student while Miao Ran tries to stop her from jumping to rapid conclusions. He tells her what actually happened, but all she believes is that she was drugged by not two, but one pervert, and that pervert is Zheng himself. He tells her to ask Tia Lung herself and she cannot trust him. Just as she wakes up, Hong Jin immediately asks if Zheng is the one who got her drunk. It is obvious how deeply she wants Zheng to be the culprit, so she finally has something to call off the engagement. To her surprise, she immediately hugs Zheng and thanks her for saving him from those perverts. Meanwhile, a swaggy old dude with a muscular body and shiny black sunglasses named Mr. Da Zheng arrives at the grilled fish restaurant upon those perverts' request to take revenge on the person who wiped the floor with Black Dragon gang members. Just as he's about to trash the place with the group of thugs he brought, they see Zheng getting out of the main door. Mr. Da tries to smash him with his bat, but Zheng ducks to pick up a quarter from the floor, and the bat hits Long. This is exactly why you should not wear sunglasses when the sun is down. The swaggy uncle immediately starts apologizing to Long as Long is friends with his superiors in the Black Dragon gang. During Long's last meeting with the Black Dragon's boss, swaggy uncle is also there serving drinks. He takes off the sunglasses and tries to get Long to forgive him. Zheng manipulates Long into becoming a hero by asking for Tianlong's contract and burning it in front of them. As of this moment, gang members cannot approach her. Sadly, the one who receives her gratitude is still Zhang. Even Hong Jin realizes that Zhang is not as bad as she thought. 
Swaggy Uncle then grabs Zhang, saying that this guy cannot leave. Unfortunately, the bag of food drops from Zhang's hand, and it's time for everyone to press F for the Swaggy Uncle. Zhang turns around and stares at the Swaggy Uncle that almost makes him wet his pants. He even involuntarily apologizes, but for ruining a whole month's food, Zhang smacks him at the back of his neck, and then humbly tells him not to move as his bone is broken now. Big boss Mr. Da Zhang gets angry at the perverts who brought him into this mess, and now that Zhang has left, he puts back his sunglasses because the respect is temporary, swag is permanent. Miao Ren wants to see a small room, so they all tag along with Zhang to go to his place, which is about 30 kilometers away. Tiang Lun goes as well, so Mia Ren asks Hong Jin to drive them. Lung tries to convince her not to go and instead spend time with him, but she has no use for this worthless dude now, so she declines him. Although if she were a little smarter, she would have realized that she was relying on a guy who has purple hair. Lung knows that he is just being used, but he is down bad for Hong Jin. Hong Jin pulls up her limited edition, only one of 20 Bentley models, which was a gift from Hong Jin's mother. Zhang is really impressed with this elite car, and noticing that, Hong Jin proposes that he would also get rich, as she would immediately transfer 100 million if he calls off the engagement. He declines because to him, the commitment is more important than any amount of money. Who are we kidding? He knows that if he gets married, not only will he have a beautiful and hot wife, but also all this money. They park the car just outside the alleyway and walk toward Zhang's apartment. The rich daddy's princess is witnessing such a place for the first time. Zhang shows him his room, but he forgot about his new roommate that has been living with him since last night. Man has lost count of the hot girls around him. Just as he opens the door, Ru Zhang comes out of the shower in a towel and shares that her apartment has not been ready yet, so he has to overwelcome her stay and sleep in his room tonight as well. All three girls are shocked to see a half-naked girl in this guy's apartment who just rejected 100 million, because he is a man who stands by his word. Ruzhan asks who these girls are, and he immediately puts on the traditional beard and hat and tries to ask for a chance to explain himself. Hongjin is devastated as not only does he have a girlfriend, but he's also living with her, yet he still wants to get married to her. Still reluctant to get admitted to this guy's harem, she rushes outside to call her grandpa to share this news. Zhang is an intelligent man, so he knows that nothing can explain the situation he is in, so he just waves goodbye. Miao Ren follows her, and after they leave, Ruzhan apologizes for causing him trouble. As he's an intelligent man, he would never lash out at a half-naked hot girl, so he tells her not to worry as he does not blame her. Tiang Lung, who's still there, shares that he trusts Dr. Zhang. As it is going to be dark soon, he offers to walk her back to the school and tells Ru Zhang to lock the door carefully. Outside the building, they run into the cheating coward who left Ru Zhang with the thugs last night. He tries to belittle Zhang by saying that he's lucky to have found this wine servant from KTV as his girlfriend. Of course, he's referring to Tiang Lung. Kanning Zhang is a master of wordplay, so he states that if he knows that she's an employee at Beiling Meng KTV, that means he must be a frequenter there. He asks Tiang Lung if he has seen this guy there, and she responds that he frequently visits KTV and has a good relationship with a girl named Ru Hua. She heard that he takes her out all night every time he comes. Zhang gives him a thumbs up for having two separate girls for the workplace at KTV. He then turns towards the girl he's with and tells her to be careful as men like him who have different girls often end up transmitting some disease. She walks to the room without waiting for her cheating partner and locks up. Tiang Lung praises Zheng for overpowering that guy and making a fool out of him, but Zheng shares that he was really admiring him. As that cheater begs for apology while kneeling outside his own room's door, his boss tells her to go find Ru Ha and don't bother her. Just then, Ru Zhen opens the door to rub some salt on her ex-boyfriend's wound. She tells him that he got home quickly today and closes the door on his face. Then she opens the door again and spits and closes the door back. She always waits for the best opportunity for revenge. That's exactly what a Ren taught us, Tatake. Meanwhile, Tang Long and Zhang reach the school and he advises her to adjust her routine properly and take more rest now that her contract with the Black Gang is terminated. As she slightly bows down to show Zhang her huge gratitude, she notices a hand sticking out of the bush behind Zhang. Upon closer look, it's Hai Feng Yu drunk and unconscious. Zhang tells Tiang Ling to hold her while he, again for the second time the same day, sticks his needles in another drunk girl's butt. Yes, the acupuncture needles. Although that does give a treat for his eyes, Tiang gets red with embarrassment upon realizing that this is how he woke her up as well. Fei Wu wakes up and apologizes to Zhang for suspecting his ability and shares that she really is pregnant, and now she needs his help to do the abortion. Dr. Zhang is standing across from Fei Wu in the park at night and appears worried. Sin Dun questions whether Dr. Zhang is the parent of Fei Wu's child. Dr. Zhang is baffled by his own behavior as a playboy despite being engaged to Principal Q. 
Never before has he been such a villain. Dr. Zhang encourages Feiwu to abstain from alcohol while she is pregnant, but she discloses her plans for an abortion by claiming that Pengwu has taken advantage of her while she's still a student. It turns out that Pengwu, not Dr. Zhang, is the father of her child. Sun Tian exhales in relief at this realization. She agrees with Dr. Zhang and asks whether she really wants retribution after wiping away her tears. In light of his father's role as the vice president of the Shengsheng Public Security Department, Fei Wu worries about Peng Wu's enormous influence. It won't be simple to defeat him. Dr. Zhang makes Fei Wu think of his friend who made a three-month commitment to overcome Peng Wu. Fei Wu is still unsure though about her friend's chance of beating Taekwondo champion Peng. Dr. Zhang calls Black Bear right away to inquire about how his practice is doing. Black Bear lies and sips a soft drink while lying in his bed and says he's given it his all, but he isn't sure he can beat Peng despite his efforts. Fei Wu is standing next to Dr. Zhang, who tells him and offers to bring Black Bear to dinner if he does. Fei Wu is initially taken aback, but she consents to serve dinner if Black Bear triumphs. She assures Black Bear that what Dr. Zhang said is accurate. Excitedly jumping out of bed, Black Bear accidentally knocks his buddy off the pulse he starts practicing hard. Fei Wu is Black Bear's whole and utter love. Dr. Zhang begs Fei Wu to treat Black Bear to supper if he wins after terminating the call and she accepts. Dr. Zhang orders the two families to go back to their dorms before turning around and leaving. Dr. Zhang is lost in thought as he travels and wonders if his grandfather's assertion that males in their family constantly struggle with the issue of being associated with women is accurate. Dr. Zhang sees Zhang Ang Feng Lin having a private moment while passing by an apartment. As he watches this, Feng issues Zhang a warning not to touch any other women going forward, and Zhang makes a commitment to stay true to her. Zhang worries that his superior status at work could lead to problems, since coworkers might start getting negatively about the relationship. He appeals to Feng for his promotion to vice manager. Feng discloses that she's assigned the vice manager at the moment, Lin, a difficult assignment that seems hard to finish in the lot of time. Feng intends to suggest Zhang to the point of directors for consideration when Lin fails to submit a report on the assignment. Then they will declare their relationship in a formal way. Disgusted by their tale, Dr. Zhang feels bad for the poor management. Overwhelmed by his thoughts, Dr. Zhang leaps off the ground, taking off his medical coat, and then drops it on the bushes. He wants to engage in martial arts training because it's been a while since his last session. Soon later, Zhao shows up. She takes up Dr. Zhang's coat after spotting it in the woods with the intention of giving it back to him tomorrow. She turns around and sees the men's clothing and footwear lying on the ground. Zhao wonders why Zhang left his clothing on the ground, and she stoops down to pick them up, still in the woods. She hears Zhang's voice as she reaches into the clothing. She glances up, startled to see the chicken goblin. The creature has a rooster-like head and an athletic golden yellow body. Zhao is grabbed by the chicken goblin and pulled towards it, which causes her to lose control over Zhang's possessions, which drop from her hands. The goblin insists that Zhao submit to him since he didn't transfer her physical attributes. Rushing over to them, Zhang begs Zhao not to accept the goblin's offer, emphasizing that it's insane and out of control. Zhao concedes to the goblin's demand in spite of Zhang's protests. Zhang attempts valiantly to halt the goblin. Punches are thrown from behind, but the goblin is more powerful. Zhang is violently struck by it and falls on the ground unconscious. The sound of his phone ringing awakens naked Zhang the following morning, the grandfather of Qiu. When he calls, Zhang answers and offers to meet him for dinner that night. Zhang, whose head is still spinning, notices that Zhao, also naked, is sleeping on top of him. As he tries to recall what happened the night before, boom, here it is. The chicken goblin's practice sessions in the wood come to mind. While he's practicing, Zhang hears footsteps coming towards him. He notices Zhao there when he turns to his side. As he recalls, a shivering surge of horror sweeps through him. He recalls his grandfather's warning not to become sidetracked during double practice, should he suffer severe consequences, and a frightening surge of panic sweeps through him. The chicken goblin became unhinged as a result of this diversion, turning into an out-of-control super chicken beast. Although Zhang made every effort to stop the accident, he was powerless to stop it. Both Zhang and Zhao dress themselves. Although Zhang apologizes to Zhao, she maintains that he's not to blame. She feels as though she no longer deserves him. Zhang tries to explain to her, but Zhao refuses and tells him not to bring up the incident ever again. Zhang is aware of his grandfather's dying request for him to wed Qi. He feels his face in the meantime and notices that's no longer paralyzed. When he arrives at the hospital, he runs across Fei and Sun Tun waiting at the front desk. They are welcomed to Zhang's room. When a coworker inquires about Zhao, Zhang replies that she's already reported for duty. He turns to face Fei and promises her that everything is ready and that the surgery won't hurt. Fei hesitates when Zhang urges her to take off her clothes to begin the procedure. But in order to make her feel more at ease, he pledges to blindfold himself throughout the surgery. Fei is relieved, but she becomes increasingly perplexed when she notices Zhang concealing his eyes in a Ninja Turtle fashion. Fei and Sun Tian wait in anticipation as Zhang giggles, takes off the blindfold once more, and apologizes for the joke. 
The surgical procedure starts and lasts for 30 minutes. Fei continues to sleep on the bed as Zheng summons Xian Tan to come over. He assures Xian Tan that everything went smoothly and requests that she let Fei sleep, so that she can get the rest she needs. Sun Tan is informed by Zhang that he's departing to see Kyo's family and that he will return shortly. He leaves, leaving Sun Tan contemplating Deng Zhang's integrity as he leaves the room. Zhang remembers the last time he arrived and how everyone received him cordially as he stands in front of the enormous wooden gate. But now, nobody's there to welcome him. He experiences a sense of sadness as he muses on how fleeting relationships are. He suddenly notices a gas cylinder and utilizes it as a temporary tool to get to the hallway. Zhang's poise and tenacity excite Kyo's grandpa as he watches him move. He becomes unhappy when he sees Zhang because he thinks his granddaughter doesn't want to wed Zhang. His train of thinking is interrupted by Q's son and daughter-in-law who remind him of his pledge to call off the wedding, because Zhang is regarded to be of lesser social standing. They quickly descend the stairs to meet Zhang at the entrance to the hall. Zhang leaps off the gas cylinder, forcing it to crash into the wall due to its fast speed. Grandpa embraces him and guides him to the warmth. He's greeted with warmth by Grandpa, who then directs him to the dining room where a variety of meals are offered. Zhang asks Q's grandfather about the meeting goals after lunch because he's curious. Grandpa starts off by stating that they have agreed to become brothers, with him being the younger brother and Zhang's grandpa being the older. Grandpa Zhang had feelings for a woman who later wed Q. Xin's grandma tragically passed away 25 years ago and Zhang's grandfather accused Q of being responsible. Zhang's grandfather and Q decided to set up a marriage between their grandkids as a means to make up for the loss. Zhang puts his fork down after hearing the entire exchange and queries Q's family about if they want to continue. After hearing everything said, Zhang sets his fork down and inquires about Q's family, desired to end their relationship. The mother of Jin affirms their goal and presents him with a check for 20 million yuan, implying that unless he wins the lottery, Zhang will never be able to accumulate such fortune in his lifetime. When Jin's mother notices Zhang's interest in the check, she thrusts him with a stack of documents for the marriage's dissolution. She sternly requests that he sign, telling him that this wedding was nothing more than a joke, and that Zhang is unworthy of becoming a member of their family. Zhang begins signing the documents while nodding his head. After finishing, he adamantly informs everyone in the hallway that he and Q's family will no longer be associated. With a fork, Zhang rips apart the 200 million won check and assertively claims that he doesn't require it. He counsels them against viewing their daughter as a product of being bought and sold. Jin's mother is unfazed by Zhang's acts and stands with pride. He reverses direction. He turns away and expresses gratitude to Q for the meal and says he could one day extend an invitation to Q for dinner. The mother of Jin replies icily that she won't see him again. Q is disturbed and concerned about his granddaughter one day regretting the wedding's postponement on the other side of the hall. Looking down at his table as Zhang leaves, Q discovers that the lunch has magically vanished. The same note is posted by his son. Where did the food go? Everyone is horrified. After leaving Q's home, Zhang pulls out his phone and makes a call to Mrs. Fatty, his cook. He tells her not to make lunch and shows her the food that was taken from Q's table. Yan is teaching Yan Nok in book 1 in the residential area, and Mrs. Fatty requests that he pick Yan up there. After agreeing, Zhang hangs up. When Zhang enters the neighborhood, she observes Yan Nok having fun in the dirt with her friends. He approaches her and inquires about her teacher out of worry. According to Zhang Nok, her teacher slept off and her father instructed her to go play while he looked after the teacher. To report an issue at her residence, Zhang advises Zhang Nok to contact the police. Zhang understands that going up the stairs would take a long time because Zhang Nok resides on the fifth floor. He raises the pressure using a water pump. He lifts himself up by using a water pump to enhance the water pressure. He enters the dining room through a broken glass window where Zhao Nuk's father was attempting to hurt Yan. He's knocked down cold by the quick kicks and skateboard strike from Zhang. Zhang then dresses Zhao Nuk, who awakens due to the uproar. Yan admits that the man handed her a cup of coffee, which led her to nod off, as he recounts the entire incident to her. Yan attacks the attacker with a skateboard in his personal space after becoming enraged. Police sirens suddenly start to come into the distance. As the cops draw near from the main door, Zhang tells Yan to flee through the smashed window. They successfully land on the earth after he creates an improvised parachute out of a drape. They attentively examine the incident while hiding behind another structure. A little while later, Zhao Nuk's mother, who is frightened by the police presence, shows up at the scene. She asks the police what happened and they say that because Zhao Nuk's father is associated with the gang, they believe that someone broke in out of personal malice. Yun is given the assurance by Zhang that he will go home with her and then explain everything to the authorities. While carefully going over the crime scene, the police are not aware of Zhang's abandoned bag of lunch that was left on the ground. Yun thanks Zhang for saving her life as they stroll hand in hand. When they pause, Yun says she has chest trouble and asks Dr. Zhang to examine her. She takes her shirt off. Because they're in a public space, Zhang conceals his eyes and tells her to put her shirt back on. Yun tuckles and assures him that they are merely in the suburbs before redonning her shirt. Zhang understands that he accidentally misbuttoned her bra, making her uncomfortable. 
After noticing them and approaching, a lady police officer finds Jung's identity card at the scene, turning him into a suspect. She demands that he go with her to the police station. Yeon insists on coming along as a witness, but Jung declines and says she'll be back shortly. Yeon texts her friend Woo after he departs. Yeon, whose father holds a high position at the public security ministry, texts her buddy Woo Hee after he departs. Woo Hee hurriedly asks her father for assistance, pleading with him to detain Jung for an additional two days. Woo Hee's father chooses to step in as a result of being impressed by Jung's rapid thinking. To get the authorities to go into the CCTV footage from the residential neighborhood, Jung explains the issue to the police. While acknowledging the consistency between Jung's testimony and the available proof, the lady police officer insists on speaking with Jing Long, the actual victim at the hospital. As Zhang asks to talk with Jing first at the hospital, Jing's wife apologizes for her husband's behavior. Jing screams loudly inside the space. Jing interrupts into a frenzy inside the space and threatens Zhang. Remaining composed, Zhang makes a claim. He can treat Jing's younger brother, who is thought to be incurable of other medical professionals. Jing reveals where the anesthetics were are hidden into the pillow out of his curiosity. As he departs, Zhang declares his cooperation with the authorities but questions his capacity to heal Jing's brother. Jing braids himself for coming clean. Wu He's father learns the whole tale and is amazed by Zhang's wit sitting in his office, which allows him to quickly establish his innocence. He thinks of hiring Zhang to work for him. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and press that bell icon to know about our latest videos.